Welcome everyone to the Symphogear Gear Podcast, episode 11. The podcast where we talk about Symphogear Gear and explosions and music and probably the moon and probably Hibiki. Tonight, I am joined by my co-host, as always, the person who is sixth in line for the Spanish throne, Sea Tactics. I don't even know what that means. If six people die, you'll become the queen of uh, Spain. The queen of Spain? Yes. Why would I want to become the queen of Spain? I don't know, but you will be. Oh, well, all right then. Exactly. It seems interesting to say the least. Yes, I came up with that when I was driving home from work last week. You've been holding on to that for a while, it seems. Yeah, I, I need to really just like write down a list because I come up with these great ideas, but then I forget them when it's actually time for the podcast. That is incredible, sir. So, speaking of the podcast, tonight we have an episode of Symphogear Gear filled with everything that makes Symphogear Gear Symphogear. Gear. This is true. This is true. There's a lot of things that are happening in Symphogear Gear this week. Yes, it, uh, it's like very like plot uh, dense. I guess would be is that the right it, word? It's, it's dense with something. I think dense is definitely the right word. <laughs> it is dense think... with many things. Sifo Gear XV, episode 11, in the beginning, was the word. What is the word? Because let me tell you about the word. The word is the bird. <laughs> okay, that's not what I was going to take. I was thinking more like the biblical reference of the episode title, but sure, you can go with that too. Biblical, blabical, yes, clavical, whatever. <laughs> turns out Shimha turns herself into language so that she could survive, then make sure her DNA survived by having each human carry a piece of her DNA or something or another? Yeah, it's like she's Thus, she's within the human uh, genetic code of everyone. Thus, she will be able to turn all of humanity into monsters. I'm just as confused as everyone is, and also probably the writers, maybe. <laughs> no, I don't think the writers are confused. I think they are on drugs. This was... What? I, as soon as this middle scene happened where they were explaining it, I was like, this is... This is ridiculous. What is what is the what is happening? Well, I, it made sense at first when I was watching it, but then when I went to like rewatch it to get the screenshots for this, I was thinking, wait, I don't think this completely makes sense. It doesn't at all. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like you have a god who turns himself into language, and then uh, like embeds himself within humanity, and then the only way to stop them from like being reborn every time is to like break up the language so that they cannot be fully reformed. But then apparently was, you have the bracelet and the Miku, and then that can somehow do it, which I guess because Miku was released from Ball's curse when she was hit by the laser beam, she'd be the person who could do that, so maybe that makes sense. Does that make sense? Did I lose you, or you just completely have no idea what to say? Oh, apparently C Tactics is being attacked by Mr. Kitty now. Uh, they are currently playing a game of chess, which will take approximately 22 minutes, because as you may or may not know, C is the second best person in the world at chess. I should really include that as my next introduction for him. So, anyway, uh, yeah, this episode had a lot. It had a lot of explanations, which I appreciated. I thought it was interesting, like, how rich the lore of this show is, even if it's not, like, really explained. Or it is explained, but it's, like, it's, I don't know. It's, like, it's explained, but it doesn't always make complete sense, especially when you have, like, so much, and the focus of the show is much more on the, like, fun action and the weird stuff and the explosions, which, yeah, we got lots of explosions. Uh, so, starting off the episode, we had a flashback to the battle between uh, Enki, I believe his name was. Uh, yeah, Enki and Shemha. I I wish I could had time to go back to it to see if like Enki was the person that they were showing in the first episode of the season when they were on the moon. But yeah, it showed him uh, battling Shemha. It's like the big climactic battle that they had in prehistoric times or whenever that was. Um, and it ended up being uh, Maria, who was the one who was looking on at, or who, like, the flashback was, like, in her memory or whatever. Yeah, I'm not completely sure why that is, but it makes me think that her relic is somehow connected to Enki, because you also saw that when she woke up, the relic was directing uh, her and Tsubasa to the, uh, the core thing. What was the core thing? I don't remember. <laughs> There's at least lots of terminology that I don't recall. Uh, Shimha's 
Yeah, I, I think I wrote it down, but I can't find it. Whatever. So we have uh, Subasa and Maria going to the core. And something that I did notice is that they were the only ones who were not attacked by the self-defense things. Like, yeah, Hibiki and Chris, uh, Shirabe and Kiriki were also attacked. And then Vanessa and uh, Elsa. By the time the season is over, I'm actually going to remember all the characters' names. And that scares me. At least the important characters. I'll probably still uh, not know anyone else. And I'll probably like forget C-Tactic's name like halfway through the podcast, too. How could you forget my name? Uh, it's George, right? Uh, Bill. I know a person Bob. named Bill. I know a person named Bob. Bob is a good person. You'll, everyone needs a Bob in their life. I agree. And you don't even know Bob. So, yeah. Uh, uh, something I find interesting about this episode was at the beginning they mentioned Fine. Yeah, they did. That was... It really makes me wonder, wonder like, will Fine somehow come back for the finale? Because I feel like this being Sympho Gear, that's a thing that will happen. Right, exactly. I mean, this whole, like, beginning sequence was weird. I'm pretty sure you've already said it yourself, but the Inky versus Shimha thing, I, did, I was like... When the episode started, I was like, what is this? Yeah, what? I was like... Did I... Did I, did I, did I Am I watching the wrong anime? Or no, I was thinking, wait, is this like something that happened last episode that we forgot about? I have, I, yeah, I had, like, it was a cool fight. Like, he gets his arm sliced off. Yeah, it was like, and, like, filled with explosions and everything that makes Sympho Gear Sympho Gear. Mm hmm. It was great. It was fun. Yeah, it like, was, this whole episode, you could argue that this episode might not make any sense, but it was definitely fun. I think some of it made sense. I just think. The way it's, the, I don't want to say ham fisted, because I think Sympho Gear, it, it's hard to do truly ham fisted. Right. And Sympho Gear just the based off the way the story is is. Yeah, it's, it's like told. Like it does not have to make sense for it to work, but it's like there's like so much lore and stuff that, and they don't really like have room for it all. Mm -hmm. It's like, right. it's like you try to cram all the lore in Fate, uh, Fate Stay Night into Fate Khalid. Yeah, it, it, you get it's, it will not work well. It, it's very it's it's incredibly. Uh, yeah. Gear is unique. I'll say that. That but is this definitely episode, true. This this whole vision, this whole battle we had was just Maria dreaming it as she was passed out, which was interesting. Yeah, and something I don't know if you're back when I said it, but I'm wondering if uh, Mario's relic is from uh, Enki. Like, it's somehow like his arm or something. I think so. I, I think, maybe not his arm or anything, but like something, a piece of of his armor is in that Sympho gear that, that she uses, and I think I mean, last episode we talked about um we talked about Maria's influence in this story and, and where it's going to go moving forward. And I think this is it. I think this is kind of like Maria's, like, this is how her, how she's important is she's a descendant of Enki. Oh, that could be. I just didn't think descendant, but it's like her weapon is from him. It's all, kind of like Maria is the main character, sort of, kind of. I think... Yeah, it does. It does make her feel very main character ish yeah. in her importance, which is very strange considering Maria has been treated as not a main char it's character. It's like character, we'll out of that. the six, she's probably been the least important until like the recent parts of the season. Yeah, I mean, she was, in my opinion, her her best stuff as a character before this season. Was her stuff when she was the antagonist, which I thought was pretty good. Yeah, and, like, she's always been an interesting character. It's just, like, she's been off to the side so much and, like, just been there as, like, another character to fight. But now we have, like, her connection to Enki, probably, and then her relationship with Tsubasa really on display this season. Oh, yeah. They talk... Uh, Maria talks about how that since Hibiki gave Tsubasa her hand, that Tsubasa has to basically repay that favor and... Be a, a, a be a, be helpful. Be a true friend to Hibiki and the rest of these girls. And uh, uh, Maria flicks Tsubasa. Which I thought yeah, was fantastic. <laughs> that was great. It was like, oh, wait, she actually did that. Okay, Maria's cool. Yeah, she's she's fun. She's 
much more characterized in this season than I think in any of them since the season she was the antagonist in. Yeah, uh, definitely. It, especially since it's like at the start of the season we got some focus for Kiriki and Shirabe too, and like, but now it's like switching to Mario more. So we yeah. still don't get much for Chris this season. I think she might be the only one who's like just there. That typically happens. Yeah. Besides is... the season one when she was like a pseudo antagonist right. for like a puppet for Fine. But what I want to hear one more time is Mario go Mamu. Okay. Just one more time. Just one more. <laughs> Knowing the show, they'll give it to us because they seem to like be wanting to do everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, did this episode have a, had, had any uh, callbacks? I think so. Well, they mentioned Fine, so that could be one. Oh, the oh, that's Mario one. and Tsubasa song. That was their song from the Season 2 concert. Oh, hey, you're right. Yeah, so that was definitely a callback, and it definitely shows Mario like, coming full circle. The song that she sang before she betrayed Tsubasa before is now the song that they're using to team up, and uh, Mario gets her uh, new form. See, there's some really good stuff in this episode. Yes, there is. Um, so, wait, apparently I got the NK's gender on my notes, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Van- Vanessa and Elsa, they, they survive along with Milark, with that we learned later on. Yeah, but, but it looks like Elsa was really hurt, though, like overwhelmed by the, from the battle. Yeah, she can't use any more of her, I don't know, tails? Yeah. So. It- I Her use in this is completely shot. And I wonder if uh, Meadlark uh, will end up going against Vanessa and Elsa, because it seems like uh, Meadlark's like, all like going after the same fucking years they're fighting them, while Vanessa and Elsa don't seem to be like focusing on them. Granted, they also have to fight enough with the defenses, so... I think it's pretty obvious, from at least from the way I'm thinking about it and how to logically conclude this, is... I think we're getting the, the big team up. Yeah. From, with, with Noble Red and Simfo Gear. Uh, and I think what. So the last episode before this, Elsa used her like full power mode. This time, Elsa. U, or, uh, Vene- or Milark used her like body double thing, which was really cool. Yeah, that, uh, was, that was really weird, but yes, cool. What is Vanessa's? That's what I want to know. She becomes a mech. She. I was just going to say three boobs, but... She becomes a mech with three boobs. No. <laughs> That's about the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of, and you are a brilliant man. I know what Simpho Gear would do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Uh, I'm, I'm really... I, I think by the end of this, we're going to be... Vanessa, Milark, and Elsa are going to be going to be good guys yeah so i could i could see like the next episode will uh, lead off with uh, vanessa fighting some of the sinfo gears probably hibiki and chris using her mm-hmm. she'll go all out and then like by the end of the episode because that'll be episode 12 then they'll switch sides and then the battle with shemha will be like episode 13 right right um i don't think they're gonna kill them though either at the end because one they've already killed these 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 two te- technically like three times I don't even know um, like these these characters have already died and I don't think we're going to get another death from them I don't think they're going to sacrifice themselves like the villains did in season four uh, I think they're going to live I wonder if Carol will come back for like the final battle too Carol because I could see that happening especially if they use like their angel forms like Carol gave them the power to use it last time so yeah or if they'll get um, or if like they'll use their get an entirely new form for the final battle since they well do they kind of have it this season I don't know it's going to be interesting yes and they have like Shem hugging the roots of Yggdrasil everywhere and with Miku and yeah oh so, yeah there's the theme of Miku which is like the thumbnail which is terrific it's the, a terrific screenshot of uh, of Shem Ha yeah Miku. It's just, like, everything with, like, that scene was really cool. Like, getting a little bit into Shemha's mind, showing Miku trying to fight against her. I don't know if you've seen this anime, but this is what it reminded me of, seeing Miku all tied up. Is, uh, Mobile Fighter, uh, Mobile Fighter Gundam G, the ver- the finale has Rain inside of the head of a mech that's all, like, she's all, like, tentacled up in there, and she's, right. like, naked. And it's... <laughs> As a 12-year-old boy, 
my lord, I wanted to I wanted to catch that show as much as I could just for that. But um, it reminded me of a lot of that because I initially watched it. I'm like, oh, this is like totally something I'd see from that. And I'm, this may be actually a reference to that. I, I have no idea. But then Shimha moves in and, and licks Miku. I don't know if it was quite that, but it seemed like they, they were really getting really close. And I think that was more to show like how Shimha was like overpowering Miku. For at least it's control. Very weird. Yeah, it, it was, was very weird. It was. It, they also made a comment that the reason that Shimha was able to take over Miku's body is Miku wanted to be able to connect with everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if Miku is, go- is going to use the same way that uh, that Shimha uses um, how she's going to turn everybody to monsters and gain their control. Oh, I wonder yeah. if Miku's going to use that avenue to like flip the you know flip the script on her yeah because that's true because it miku would probably be able to channel shemha's power if she could figure out a way or like find some sort of weakness i mean we already know miku is is not exactly totally weak she uses she can use the info gear as we've seen in season two so uh, it, it's and, not totally out of the realm of info gear to have a character magically just be able to solve a problem and if she can use a info gear and he, Hibiko's also released from the curse, so they should have the same sort of power. Maybe. Yeah, we'll so maybe, see. Maybe we'll get Miku back in a Sympho gear for the final battle. That would be awesome. And the Miku's the one who punches the moon. No. No, 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 no. It's gotta be Miku and Hibiki together. Oh, yeah. Well, would it count and then as... they kiss. Would it count as Hibiki punching the moon because she knocked that wall down and that was part of the moon? She punched a part of the moon. <laughs> yes. He, he punched the part of the moon, therefore we're halfway happy. I also have to ask, how did they how did anyone not see this thing on the moon? Um, it had a cloaking device. No, the moon landing was fake there, it never actually went there. And that's why they never noticed it. Well, Exactly. It makes perfect sense, right? <laughs> All right. Um, so they find the OS that's based on Inky. Right. That explains all of this gibberish. In my opinion, this was gibberish. This is like some of the most... This was some Sympho Gear level. This is worse than Sympho Gear. It was exposition out the wazoo, my friend. Uh, no. And it was exposition that made barely sense. It reminds me of the exposition in the new season of SAO, except compressed down into 30 seconds for all the information. <laughs> it was like, it was, I don't think they needed to make it this complicated. Yeah. could have just... Yeah, I feel like it could have gotten the effect that they wanted to make it simpler, because they had the revelation, like, the gods were the ones who, like, created all the life on the Earth. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that makes sense. Like, uh, Shemha was one of them. She betrayed them, was trying to use their power. But then, like, the whole, like, biological calculation thing, I feel like that alludes to a bigger plot of the gods that is not really needed here. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I think... Like, I just wrote down what they were saying because I was like, there's no way to summarize this because they don't fully get it. I think what they should have done is they should have simplified it. And there's one easy way they can do this. Shemha came back because... She never truly died. Right. Well, she went into hibernation or somewhere, and her and she, her soul, uh, or no, maybe I don't know. She maybe she did die, and she was reborn as Miku. And I think they could have done something to sign in, like by reversing the curse of all. Then they that's like what sealed her. I think that that could still work. It's very to me. It was just unnecessary. I, the, and there's a lot of unnecessary things that said Fogir, don't get me wrong. Yeah. This felt like a misstep. Yeah. It, to me. I, I like the idea, but I, yeah, I feel like they could have just like simplified it some, made it less convoluted, and it still would have been the complete level of ridiculous for it to work. Yeah, it would, it would have been fine. Maybe, I, I, I don't know, they, they mess with some item, and, or like the, cha, the chateau, and the chateau activates all of this so what what, what was with the Chato? did we ever get did Hibiki just destroy it oh is, that's where Mickey came from okay 
Yeah, because like forgot for a moment. Because like, and then like Kara was using it to amplify the Symphogear's power or something, or yeah, or like yeah, there's, there's like so many like weird magical artifact things that I don't feel like I understand even after reading Wikipedia for like half an hour after watching this episode. This, this is how you simplify this very easily. Simply, you have Miku being taken over by the Shat Hare because the Shat Hare is actually the 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 soul of Shimha, and it, very easily you can explain this as their mystical pre uh, pre human people, right. or even this whole thing about the gods that could work. They just, I feel like by doing that though, they open up a lot of other things. Like, what else are the gods doing beyond Earth? And I, you definitely don't want to go there like this late in the um, season or series. Right, right. Um, but yeah, she became a language, and it's an every human sorta. Of. Mm-hmm. That's so Assassin's Creed three ending. It's not, and if you don't know about the Assassin's Creed three ending, it's one of the most lauded. Uh, endings for the simple fact that it made no sense. It was a terrible conclusion to a franchise that went on at that point for like three, four, or five years or something like that. Um, I was highly disappointed when I finished Assassin's Creed 3 and this, they did the exact same thing. Like, <laughs> like, like, except for the language part, these gods just decided to put, to, to make themselves humans or, or whatever. It was really dumb. Yeah, and the thing with the language is definitely... In, I think it's interesting, and it's sort of a parallel to the music that they've been... Uh, that's been a motif throughout everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if they like show that music as a way to be able to connect people beyond a unified language. I do wonder. Yeah, or it's like... Uh, like that's it, where they're going. If you need, like, pure words, you need to be able to, like, fully understand each other, but, like, music is a bridge across different languages. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of action throughout this, this yeah. whole episode. That's really good. Probably the yeah. best part of this episode. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and, well, I was, like, watching it, and, like, they were, like, through the first part. I was like, wait, the episode's already halfway over? It doesn't feel like it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of gr- lots of great action. Um, terrible dialogue. Uh, but, uh, so, the, the, what I love about this, this, this whole episode, I think, is the action sequence between Milark and... Maria and Subasa. The yeah. simple fact that when when Milar gets her like uses her special double thing, uh, they make a wrestling reference that it's like a tag team match now, I believe. And oh that yeah. Made me think of back in like 2006 when I, when I was a kid and watching SmackDown Friday Night SmackDown, Teddy Long he would come out uh, when like like two wrestlers had like a beef with one another, he'd be like. Hold on, player. Tonight, we're going to have a tag team match. It's like they have to like team up to fight someone? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, that would be interesting. Yeah, and this one, I, not only for the wrestling thing, but it's like the finale to like Subasa's redemption, basically saying, like, I'll never fall for your mind control thing again, or just any of that. Mm-hmm. And like she made the comment too, which I thought was really neat. How saying like Noble Red had destroyed my pride, but it's coming back. Like and then there's all the fire. It's just that was really cool. Yeah, it was really good stuff. Uh, Milark uh, does a really awesome wrestling move. Uh, only few, I guess, have been able to uh, receive. Uh, luckily, uh, and that is Milark's crotch to the face. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing that happened. That was indeed a thing that happened. I definitely have to wonder, like, how do they come up with all these things they want to include in the battle? Is it like one of the areas where I was, okay, I was just watching a, a WWE last night. I have an idea if we need to include it in the next fight. Um, they're probably not watching WWE. They're probably watching New Japan Pro Wrestling. That but too. I'm pretty sure it's the director. Like, I'm pretty sure it's, that's the director comes up with that stuff. He's like, I want this move and this move and this move. I want to play it out like this. I'm pretty sure that's what, what the director does in that, well, that I can case. See, I can see for something like this where like, they all throw in crazy ideas and he somehow puts it all together. Oh, that for sure. For sure. Um, you know, it's like saying, okay, we need a JoJo reference here. Or, or like last mm-hmm. episode, they say, okay, with the prison. So there's this thing in JoJo, we should reference that. <laughs> uh, 
I love the JoJo references in this show. <laughs> They're really good. Yeah. They're some of the best references they do. Exactly. Um, or they have like the random Utena reference for whatever reason. So so many references. Yes. This show this show is great for references to other anime. This this, is, this whole show feels like a reference. I think Simple Goonies go on my list of the most anime anime I've seen. It's true. That's a really good way to put Simpho Gear. It's the most anime anime. I need to like make a video of like the top five most anime anime out there. Like it's even a, like technically a magical girl anime. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Because it has transformation sequences. Yeah, I completely forgot that this was a magical girl anime. This show's great. <laughs> Like, it's got everything, I mean... Exactly, it has, like, a taste of sci-fi, like, tons of action. It's an idol anime sometimes. It's, it's even an idol anime! Exactly, like, Tsubasa and Maria are actual idols they perform, and then they fight uh, noise and whatever else the show comes up with. It's insane. I even think... I'm pretty sure some of the voice actresses are, in fact, idols. Yeah, because I thought I saw something like the reason they made some figures is like to advertise uh, some of the voice actresses' I, music. Yeah, I'm pr- Oh, God. It's the... Uh, I can't remember her name. It's on the tip of my tongue. But the voice actress for Subasa for sure, has, like, a, a bunch of musical stuff. Right. Uh, same thing for Chris. I can't remember their voice actresses' names, but they have, like, a lot of music. I mean, all of them do. Yeah, they're all, like, really good singers. Like, like it's normal in Japan for voice actors to also double as musicians. Right. So, is what it is. But I mean, like Subasa's voice actress and Chris are like real, like mm-hmm. they're actual. They're not really in the music business. They're not just like they do a couple songs for the shows they're doing. Right. Exactly. They have like albums. I can only imagine like how they would pitch this show. It's like, okay, so we know you're a musician, so we found a show that's a good fit. By the way, it's also a completely absurd action show. And you'll be playing Magical Girls. I imagine I imagine their manager was like, you're going to do this, and if you don't, you're going to be blacklisted. <laughs> that could be too. And they realize, wait, we're doing what? <laughs> but it, they have to have fun doing it too. <laughs> They're probably forced to do it, so... Well, hopefully, hopefully they have fun. Not, hopefully, for sure. Um, so yeah, the yigs, 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 is activated. Yeah, and that's like all over the world. And something I did not realize is that the commander then they were like in a ship going after whatever it was somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like that wasn't explained well. And then it like went everywhere, took over the earth, it made the statue of Lower Duty shed her tear. No, it was a tear, but it was like, uh, it was like cracking, and I'm like, isn't it brass? I don't think it would. It feels like very crack like that. It feels very intentional to like show that, like they're showing like how the freedom of humanity is being uh, destroyed by this. Or the yeah, it's it's very good visual uh, visual storytelling on their part. See, they, they know how to tell a story sometimes. Can I just say, even though this episode was kind of a bummer compared to the last couple episodes, man, I still don't want it to end. Oh, yeah. Like, problems aside, this is one of my favorite episodes of the show. I, every, the more I see of Simpho Gear, the more I think they could, if they would just move it in a direction where it's not saving the world... They can legit, like, do a whole other, like, five-season series. Yeah, or maybe, like, make it a lot more calm, like, show their life after saving the world, like, more, like, focus on Maria and Subasa's idols, like, how they deal with the aftermath in that type of world. I mean, they definitely could do, like, a, a slice-of-life-inspired action anime, for sure. Uh, <laughs> they could do, they could just do, like, a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or Dragon Ball Z and have, like, a... Uh, a, an adventure around the world. Yeah, they could definitely do that. Or like, like in, all the characters have very interesting backstories too. Like, how do they deal with their lives when they're not preoccupied with saving the world? Yeah, uh, these characters. It, I'm very attached to, to pretty much every one of these characters now. It took me a, a lot of seasons to get used to the the damn lollies, but yes. I finally understand what their purpose is. They're just funny and goofy. Exactly. They're kids thrown into this absurd story. I mean, even in this episode, they were running by, and, and 
uh, after Mario and Tsubasa defeat their uh, Milark. And it was hilarious because it happened like immediately after they defeat it. And Shirabe stops and is like, Mario, Tsubasa. And you just see Kirika in the background, like still running. And she stops and she's like, oh. <laughs> okay, I did not catch that, but that sounds like a Kiriki thing to do. Like, oh, people, that's what I'm here for. Oh, man. So it's just some. It's finally coming into its own. I like to see more Chris, though. I think that's just one character, even over Maria, that we haven't. We just. I, I just want to see more of her because she's great. Yeah, we got like she's the Sundere. They're trying to do Sundere's. Well, uh, I want to answer that question. But we, it was like they were trying to do something with her last season with like that kid who was injured, but then it like never really amounted to anything. Or is that season three? I know season three. Okay, yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. All the seasons start to blend together. It's true, especially the later seasons. Yeah, because like they, they kind of got into the formula thing, saying, okay, new villains, uh, make them somewhat sympathetic, new threat, um, have Hibiki punch things. Hibiki! Oh, man. I, I, I can't wait until she punches the moon or something. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I did like Chris's comment though, and like Hibiki was destroying all those things. Like, okay, your your cool, your overpoweredness is really cool sometimes. It's true. Hibiki is is fan. It's, she's like, I feel like this season she's a little bit underrated, oh. but she's awesome. Like Hibiki is like, she just punches shit. Yeah, and like you can see like how much stronger she is than at least Chris and probably the rest of the characters. But it's like. The power scaling isn't really evident until you like see Chris make a comment. It's like, oh, she just destroyed all these enemies and found her way through the wall. Okay. She's like... I mean, I've made this comparison many a times, and I, I think it's in a comparison that even the writers know about, because it's probably the inspiration of the character. But Hibiki is Goku of this series, but they've done it in a way where she doesn't seem... Like, she's not overbearing. She's not all-important to the plot. Right. And they separate the characters enough that they can all, like, have their moment to shine in battle. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, they're not just waiting for Hibi to come save them. Right. They can, like... I mean, Tsubasa... Like, the main three, Tsubasa, Chris, and Hibiki, are incredibly powerful. Right. So they can definitely all hold their own, especially Tsubasa. Yeah. She... she Turn, she can use a giant sword. She's fine. <laughs> exactly. And, like, even the lollies are weaker, but, like, together they were able to fight Elsa and win, so. Yeah, and Mario's Mario, sad, sad face. She, I loved her song this episode, though. I feel like Mario is the Vegeta of this show. Maybe, no, maybe the Piccolo. Yeah, I can see Piccolo, because Tsubasa feels more like Vegeta. Yeah. I don't know. The show's great. Exactly. They need to make like 12 more seasons. I agree. I yeah. definitely agree. I'm sure they can come up with enough uh, crazy explanations for, to justify more explosions. Of course. Of course. I mean... I mean, what haven't they done? Um, They have not done ice... Oh, no, wait, Tsubasa has ice skates. Or not Tsubasa, uh, Shirabe. Have they dived into a volcano? Probably. <laughs> I feel like there has been a volcano somewhere in this I, series. Season two, maybe? Maybe. Like, I mean, they like the last season, they had a naked guy use the use his Freeze's death ball. So Yeah, and like trigger a nuclear explosion with alchemy. <laughs> a phone pe- appears out of nowhere. <laughs> they need to find a phone on the moon. <laughs> What's that phone doing there? They're like, well, wait, I thought this phone was last season. And I can see them actually saying that, too. Or Kiriki says it in the show where I was like, wait, what are you talking about? No, it's got to be the lollies every time. They got to notice the phone because they did it the first time. Yeah. Or no, like Kiriki would say something, oh, that was here last season. And then she was like, wait, what are you talking about? What? <laughs> oh, man. We need I a, love it. Just a slice of life of the lollies would be good. Oh, for sure. For sure, just doing stupid stuff. Exactly. Like, you don't need a complicated plot to enjoy this show. Exactly. See, you get it. You understand. Yes. Just have them blow up, have them say stupid things. 
Yeah. Have Same fancy. self ref, self ref, referential, very aware. Yes. Have fan service for no reason because it's in full gear. Maybe not for the lollies. Let's not put fan service in the lollies. <laughs> okay, but for all the other characters. Mario for sure. Exactly. And then you can Definitely ask Mario. And then you'll keep asking why Mario isn't your girlfriend yet. Yes. Why isn't she my girlfriend yet? That is a good question, Rising. <laughs> Okay, I should put that for, like, the next uh, podcast title. Why isn't Mario C's girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, it would make it that's all I have to say, though. Uh, yeah, I said stuff. Like, I love the action. It's, yeah, Simple Gear is amazing. Uh, Mario, Tsubasa, they're going to hold hands, kiss. Probably so. They got you. They oh. got to... The ending of this has to be Hibiki and Miku and Mario and Tsubasa kissing. I could definitely see it be with Hibiki and Miku because they like have the like Yuri undertones this whole time, and that's like a good way to like end it. Mm-hmm. And it would just fit too. Besides, like the yeah. the writers and character or like actresses already like picture them as if they were a married couple. They do. Yeah, they're one of those things I saw on the wiki that they said they view them that way. As they should. And then you have the lollies going off and playing on a swing set. As they should. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yes, that's all I got to say. Mm-hmm. Yep. So thank you everyone for watching. We will be back next week to discuss more explosions and try to make sense of the convoluted plot. And go check out C's channel where he talks about, um, I don't know, what have you talked about recently? Well, uh, JoJo, um, Sympho Gear? Yes, exactly. Tons of stuff. And, and if you want to hear more from me, subscribe, because I have videos about Fruits Basket and My Hero Academia that will probably be out sometime within the next two months. All right. I'm looking forward to it. I like the Wikipedia link in your description, by the way. Oh, yeah, I forgot I included that. It's just, like, pure Wikipedia. <laughs> Perfect. I think they won the podcast I kind of linked to the NSA's website. Oh, I remember that. That was interesting. Exactly. I'm probably on a watch list somewhere. You are. Don't worry about it. Not because of any reason or anything. It's just because you know me and then I do stuff. And then I'm like, uh, I haven't talked to the CIA for a while. I need to go do that. So have a good night, everyone. <laughs> good night. Goodbye. All right, where's the click off button thing? <laughs>